What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Killer Cal, driving a vehicle. And my boy, I no tea, no tea, Tony Midnight. Here is the the episode you guys have been waiting for. Yeah. Forever and a day. The, the lost, lost episode. Yes, the lost episode with our brother Alika from Maui Comics and Collectibles. Yes. Here it is. Enjoy. Let us know when you're ready, sir. Right there. So, what the hell are you doing? I'm reading comics. What the hell are you reading comics? Because I can. What's up, everybody? It's Friday night, and it's another episode of... Yeah. Friday Night Fright. With me, Killer Cal. And Tony Midnight. And how you like our segue? We are talking... What? What are we talking about? We're talking about comics today, man. That's right. We're talking horror about... Horror comics, horror too. Horror comics, comic comics. Because we're a horror show. And we got a guest with us today. Yes. A special guest, if you will. Say hello, special guest. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not that special. <laughs> special Ed? No, that's us. Celebrity guest. Celebrity uh, guest, if you will. The well, owner, the proprietor, the man of the hour, the man that we visit every time we come down this side. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Brother Alika. Alika. Maui Comics and Collectibles. Maui Comics and Collectibles. It's Maui Comic. Yeah, right. correct. Cool. You got it right. Yeah. So, so people are name. going Maui Comic Books and Collectibles. I'm like, no, I think it's Maui Comics and Collectibles. There you go. I think that's the way it is said. What is all that? You sound like Forrest Gump. I know. Hey, <laughs> dip, I mean, this is funny. All right, so we're talking about comic books, and we don't mean to piss off any other show. No. Hopefully they'll come on our show, and we can go on their show. And uh, and not about love for you, not about love. Nothing about love by the nerd watch. So if you ever hear them, they're on. I, I think at three o'clock on Fridays. I, Thursday. I, I, Thursday. 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 Thursdays. 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 So, Thursdays. 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 Three o'clock. Thursdays. Three o'clock. Thank so, you, Shags. Uh, they record in our store, actually. <laughs> ah! You guys are more than welcome to, by the way. Right. But right. I know you don't like to be late at night, uh, even though you guys are Friday night frights. Right. Right. Kind of weird. It's weird, ain't it? <laughs> you guys afraid of the dark or something? <laughs> no. No. We're just afraid of comics. I don't like. <laughs> Speaking I of comics, look at the stack he brought. He's got a whole bunch of good stuff, man. He's got the trying goodies. to prepare. <laughs> He's got Tales from the Crib. He's got Weird War Tales, man. All of this classic good stuff. Some awesome DC so, 20 cent horrors. So I'm going to let the comic book fanatics. I'm a comic book fan. I'm going to let the comic book fanatics, which is a fan. A okay. fan. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when you draw and do art, you have to be a comic book right. fan. I'm going to actually do an original art piece today while on the show at the same time. Um, we which bet, will be the bet. first I've ever done. Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> we'll take pictures of it. You'll see it on Instagram. We'll, we'll try, Facebook, but it's gonna go up. I'll post it on the Maui Comics too. Right, so it'll be it'll. I'll, I'm gonna give it to Alika them so they can they can have it. It'll be oh, the first God. Friday Night Fright on display. Given on display at the piece. store. <laughs> <laughs> so the and topic they're, and, and they're located at three 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 Derry Road. That's right. Unit one hundred two. In 102. case you get confused. Just in case you they're like, kind of tucked away in the corner, but that's awesome because that. Only means Give us that underground feel, right? Right. And mm-hmm. the, only the hardcore comic book. Yeah, I gotta it feel say, cool that you found it. Right. <laughs> cool that I found it. So, you know, it's cool is that we see so much people from, like, outer islands and out of state coming, hey, you guys got a comic book yeah. store. Yes, we don't live in grass shacks. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. We don't walk around naked. <laughs> Wait, I do. <laughs> um, uh, not at the store, right? <laughs> I must have not been there that time. No, no, no. <laughs> right, either, either Kaleo was or your brother, Richard. Yeah, was. Kaleo's pretty forgiving with that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, we both were. No, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, what? Uh, what? so what? the topic I asked you to pick was zombies, and you picked zombies, right? You picked zombies. Uh, zombies, but you can, you, you can draw no, I'll draw like, zombies. Buddy. And then Alika said skull, so I'm going to attempt to... Do a something. Skull zombie. Uh, no, I'm not really a zombie skull. versus shark. <laughs> <laughs> when would that ever happen? It's happened. It they happened. melt once they touch the water. We've already seen that in The Walking Dead, right? Do they melt when? Because they're, they're so degraded yeah. and they yeah. just like fall to pieces. That actually would make sense. Well, does actually. Have you seen um, Zombie versus Shark? No, I haven't. Is it's that a, a real movie? It's, it's not, actually not, zombie. It's it's, a, it's part of the movie Zombie from Fulci, Lucio Fulci. 
kind of like a weird Italian sequel mm. to Dawn of the Dead back in the 70s. And there's a scene where this lady is skin diving. I mean, like, full-on skin diving. No, I see what you're, like, you're, you're doing the hand gestures I'm doing the on hand radio. It's full-on skin diving. Full upper female upper body torso. Yes. Oh, true to 70s form. Yes. <laughs> All I did, did, did just, just a little, just a little bit of uh, you know 70s uh, hedges. <laughs> Oh, 70s bush? You know? No, I had hedges. Was she a zombie? No, she wasn't. <laughs> okay. She's just diving around. I don't know, know how I would feel about that. And, and a shark comes around, and then there's a zombie walking around, and it's like, oh, I want to eat the shark. The zombie eats the shark? How do we shark? get from comic book to zombies eating sharks? Because it's, it's famous. No, I know. The dude wearing the shirt, you know, have you seen This Is The End? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. You see that shirt that Jay Bernashaw is wearing? Said Bernshaw the J J the good the Seth Rogen's best friend. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's wearing a zombie zombie versus right, shark, shark shirt. It's one of those uh, underground things. Yeah, it is. Obscure things. Available at FrightRags. <laughs> dot com. Hey, don't call to order, sir. Okay, sorry. Anyways, um, let's get so some horror let's, comics. Well, let's get a little bit of history from Malika. So, what got you into comics? Me? Oh, there was. Probably one of my bad uncles when I was t- he got me into superhero comics. He gave me he gave me my first like Excalibur X Men stuff. Like oh, oh, nice! Excalibur is awesome. But my first real comics I realized because it counts is Mad Magazine, and this kind of goes into what Tony uh, was going to get into with the history a bit in the forties and fifties. But Mad Magazine was under the um, publisher EC Comics. EC. Oh, wow. You had a wow. lot to do with what happened with um, Seduction of the Innocents. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear? If you heard about this. That in the 40s, you know, like the the, the more whole, like the early 50s. Yeah. I mean the the 30s and 40s, like when comics started coming out, they had all these crime comics and um, extremely graphic yeah, stories and the, right. and you know torture and blood. And the stuff. issue of Tales from a Crypt that I brought today is issue 31, and this is still um, before there was a code. You notice there's no Comics Code Authority. It's still pretty gruesome. This guy's about to get his hands chopped off. Yeah, <laughs> Jack no Davis, way. one yeah. of the greatest illustrators of all time. Nice, He's amazing, and I love um, this work. People will recognize his work actually from also Mad Magazine because he did work on Mad Magazine and um, all the photorealistic stuff you see, and then. Also, he worked on um, TV Guide forever. He only wow. just recently retired. So all those painted covers you see of like, you wonder why the characters look so realistic and they have yeah. these, you know, like cartoonish bodies and stuff. That's Jack Davis. Like nice. that's purely his style. Awesome. And so, you want to you want to hear the history of this thing? Let's go in, let's, let's go in down. Drop some horror, history. Let's horror, get nerdy with it. Horror <laughs> comics was kind of given a bad rap in in, like, in the fifties. Like, it was popular up until a point, and then all of a sudden, you had Dr. Frederick Wortham. He wrote a little, uh, I don't know what kind of book this is. He just wrote a book, and it's called Seduction of the Innocent, and he goes on to saying that, uh, okay, uh, listen to this. Comic books are the direct cause of juvenile delinquency. What? (laughs) And... It promoted deviant sexual behavior because female breasts in comics protruded in a provocative way. It's what? true. Yeah, well, in the forty, in the thirties and forties, now when you look at the comics back then, the female breasts they're known to protrude, and they call those headlight covers. <laughs> Collectors look for them. Collectors do look for them. There's bondage covers from the forties and fifties. I mean, kidding yeah, me? he's not pulling this stuff out of nowhere. He, you know, he's he's recalling real life phenomenon. But then he leaps to the conclusion that it causes juvenile delinquency. It's like you know the fifties where they're real, yeah. you know, uptight about things like that. And so it's just like all this here, they're Reaper. looking for something to blame it on. You know, right, right, right. Anything to just, it's just like how they say reefer like cause schizophrenia. Reefer madness. Yes. Reefer madness. Reefer madness, <laughs> man. There's no madness in reefer. It's more like mellow. Faster. It's Faster. reefer mellow. <laughs> right? If you only use an M in there for... Uh, yeah. I mean, in the 40s and the 50s, man, there's like... Um, have you ever read of classic comics? Classic. Yeah. Classic Illustrated? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They used to reprint the old, uh, you know, books like Mark Twain and yeah, they, Shakespeare stuff. Well, those like one of the first guys because they... Yeah, they educational really comics were really... And that's what EC Comics, who uh, Tales from the Crypt is printed yeah. on, they originally stood for educational comics. 
<laughs> and, nice. and they switched it because sales were failing in the 40s. And um, so Max Gaines was the original owner. Um, and he built it from nothing. You know, he took, it was before comics were even a thing. He would take reprints of Sunday funnies and put them in a, in a comic book format and sell them like that. And people were like, you're crazy. People can get that in this newspaper. Why are you doing that? And, but he built an empire, educational comics, and they did those along the lines of Classics Illustrated. They reprint popular stories and stuff like that. Yeah, nice. And then, you know, sales started failing, of course, and um, people's man imaginations were wandering, so they wanted more. And so um, his son Bill Gaines picks it up, and he didn't even want to be a publisher, and um, yeah. and he he t changes the name from educational comics to entertaining comics. Oh, nice! And they start focusing heavily on well, for a while they had the crime suspense stories, and there crime wasn't suspense. anything too controversial. And then they added the you know the gory and macabre angle. Macabre. Macabreing it. <laughs> <laughs> That and crime suspense story. Yeah, it used to be oh true God, crime suspense was the early off. stuff. Yeah, and the then head and the axe. And then they started doing that kind of stuff, and that really got readers. So, so they rode that line pretty hard for the early 50s, and then you got Frederick Wortham coming out with the seduction of the innocents, blaming almost completely EC Comics and their content. And thanks, thanks. And they took yeah. it to court. And some of the, and when you look through the EC com, yeah, they went to the Supreme Court, I think, and they and they established the Comics Code Authority. It's like a self-policing mechanism of the major pub publishers. Right. Um, you know, it, it, it's a pretty. Everybody knows a story kind of by now, and now nobody has any use for the Comics Code Authority. I think the last time it was used yeah. was in the 90s. People are like, why do we even care anymore? Nobody cares what's in comics. <laughs> Nobody just, gives a just, crap. Just put like, you know, mature on top. Of yeah, there's I'm a mature. TVMA or whatever things they rate it nowadays. So, yeah, I mean, they, they went through some, like horror comics went through some crap. And they used to burn them. Um, you know, what? in the 50s, oh. after this after this trial, at the beginning of the establishment of the Comics Code Authority, that's what Ooh. led to all these... Oh, but it's fight words, bro. Now, it sounds bad, <laughs> but actually, we're talking about the Silver Age, too, the 60s, when the Comics Code first existed, and that is why we have all these superheroes nowadays, is because those all came as a result because they could no longer publish these offensive, controversial comics. Yeah. Oh. They had to do these shiny, happy stories with morals. Shiny, happy They had to have people. happy endings. Certain bad things couldn't happen. Yeah. I like happy endings. Yeah. <laughs> I like happy endings. In your comics? I don't in know. They're not as entertaining. In Thailand? In Thailand? Oh, especially in Thailand. Hey, mate, get back to comics. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, okay, I, oh, I show you off, Abra. I want to talk about, real quick, um, something that this other guy said. And they had this big congressional hearing over the whole... You know, code the comics. Sorry, yeah, congressional hearing. They didn't go to the Supreme Court. Congressional hearing. Right, right. Congressional, yeah. Congressional. But, but Bill this, Gaines testified yeah. in defense of comics. And if you listen to that speech, it's one of the greatest speeches given on the appreciation of comics ever. He, he was like the D. Snyder of the. You know, and this is the 50s when everyone's wearing those suits and it's black and white. It's like, well, sir, blah, 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 you know? They're all like... Yeah. They all sound like a 50s propaganda movie when they talk. Wow. Well, yeah. Good well, Jiggy Willikers. They all, they all sound Good morning, like James America. Cagney. <laughs> James Cagney. <laughs> James Cagney and... Um, What's his other actor? But he really defended these raunchy, you know, scary. They're like, if, you know, literally saying what we say today, if this yeah. stuff isn't, if you can be corrupted by this kind of stuff, maybe the problem is something with your constitution and not necessarily the material you're reading. Right. Because there's millions of people who can enjoy this stuff and not go completely crazy, you know? <laughs> and kill somebody yeah. off of a drawing. No. Yeah. There was this other dude that was part of the hearing. He was like, he was backing Dr. Freddy Doodle. <laughs> Freddy Doodoo. I can't pronounce this guy's name. His K K K K Fulver. K Fulver. That's a pretty. K Fulver. K Fulver. And it's probably like German or something, so you're probably getting it wrong. K K. It really looks like K Fulver. K Fulver. K Fulver. K Fulver. What? I don't know. Whatever. But he goes on to say that. He suggested that crime comics indoctrinated children in a way similar to Nazi propaganda. Oh, hell to the no. Well, he doesn't actually, he actually has bad things to say about superhero stuff, too. Really? He invented this thing, well, not invented, he knows this thing, and it actually is kind of true, it exists to an extent. It's called the Superman Syndrome, 
where you take uh, joy or pleasure in punishing somebody for the same crime over and over again. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. And so it's like a sadistic look at, um, you know, you're, you think you're doing good, but really you're being sadistic and getting your own joy or pleasure out of it. Which is, you know, there are, there are authority figures who do kind of like get off on that kind of thing. So you're like, that kind of does exist. I mean, yeah, to an extent, but I wouldn't call it the Superman syndrome because Superman never. Well, he was the only, he was the only guy back then who would continually punish the same criminals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. You're going to get it, Lex Luthor. You're going to get it. Straight up. And Superman's a murderer, by the way, so. Mm. (laughs) Especially in those early comics. Was he a murderer? Yeah, he's killed people. He's killed Zod. In the comics, guys. I'm not doing anything controversial. (laughs) Not just in the movie. Zod. Zod. Didn't he kill Zod in the movie, too? Neo before He killed Zod. Zod in the Donner movie. Right. <laughs> Which is staying true to the comic. Which one? Is this Man of Steel? Well, yeah. He killed yeah, yeah. He killed Zod in Man of Steel, of course. That's what the one everybody's going crazy about. Yeah. I haven't heard that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to spoil that for you. Spoiler alert. A four-year-old spoiler alert. Eh, it don't really <laughs> matter to me. It really don't matter. Four-year-old spoiler alert, sir. Like, I saw the horror movie Superman Returns, and it's like, ah. There's a horror movie called Superman Returns? Yeah, it's called Superman Returns. It's a horror movie. That's not a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible movie. Maybe, should... Yeah, like Brandon Ruth creeping outside her window, looking in a sulky manner. That's kind of <laughs> creepy. <laughs> I could see that being a horror movie. The guy has super strength. You're like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't come in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope he doesn't break my window oh, off. Oh, <laughs> no. Superman's creeping on me. Uh, that was, wait, let's just talk about these comics that I have some comics to show, show and tell. I'll take pictures. Oh, show and tell, show and tell. Show and tell. This has got to be for Instagram tonight, man. So, uh, yeah, you got some good stuff right here. <laughs> oh, you got about? some good stuff, sir. Some. Good stuff. As he said, some, some good stuff. This is a, my but pride and joy. I've never, I'm I've never even heard of these ones. Uh, Weird, Weird War, War Tales. Tales. They are amazing. So they started in the early 70s. And there was a big resurgence of horror in the 70s. Oh, After yeah. the, you know, the squeaky clean 60s, everybody had their superhero fill. People are starting to go like, you know what? The horror stuff wasn't that bad. And so, actually, it's some of the greatest art and stories that were ever done in comics. And people started to pick that up, especially DC. And, you know, Marvel, to a, to a lesser extent, they started reprinting old horror stuff. But DC had original stuff. And, um, you know, their Weird War Tales, Joe Kubert did all the covers. I think Neil Adams did a lot of early covers. You know, I brought in some House of Mystery stuff. These are the Elvira issues, but House of Mystery was... Elvira. 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 The goddess, Elvira. And um, some other DC 20 cents, of course, the House of Secrets, which... Bernie Wrightson, the master of horror, did a lot of great covers, and I tried to uh, bring as many of the samples of those. This is a Bernie Wrightson cover here with the guy's finger, uh, issue 103. Guys, will, comic fans secret. will know that cover. It's a black cover. Um, Let me take a shot of that. Let me take a shot. Just uh, one for the what's one for the Instagrams. Yeah, the one for the of, trouble. <laughs> Two for of Wrightson. The and a lot, I'll, you know, oh, you can really see the creepiness in his work and how macabre it can be when he draws a scene out, you know? Yeah. That's all this is the cover of issue 107 is a bunch of, like, zombie creatures dragging this guy. I think that's actually Cain of Cain and Abel down to hell. Oh, nice. So it's, yeah, pretty creepy covers. And, you know, we all know Bernie Wrightson from creating Swamp Thing. Oh, and issue nice. 92 of House of Secrets, and so that that's something great we get from the resurgence of horror comics in the 70s is the birth of Swamp Thing. And then we get this crossover horror, which isn't necessarily purely about murder and gore and blood and guts, but you get this suspenseful, uh, you know, intellectual horror. <laughs> you go straight to Elvira. Yeah, then. Elvira. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm like, Elvira. It's Elvira. Dude. I grew up on Elvira. Me too. Her late night specials and at what her drive-in show. What was it? She just watched Up Late. Um, up Late. Yeah. Right. Was up it? Late, um, Something like that. Movie Macabre. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And movie she had macabre. that movie that was just awesome. They released. Are you they sounding re- sarcastic? Sir? No, I not loved her <laughs> first movie. I know she probably had others that Elvira might not have been as good. No, there, there's, there's one that she made called um, Elvira's Haunted Hills. Oh. <laughs> Haunted Hill, right? Yeah, right. Of course. You know, of course. Why I see that as like... I'm drawing boobs over here. What's... <laughs> you, you're drawing protruding. I feel like I'm back in high school. I got our buddy over here sitting drawing boobs on his notebook, and <laughs> we're just talking about comic books right now. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to draw a female zombie over here. You're trying to, you're drawing protruding. Now the problem with female zombies is provocative. You way. know the. 
the boobs mold off. They rot off. So it's ah. like, you know, you can't really tell they're females after a couple after years. After a while, right? Yeah. Like, like, like the biker girl from the first episode of Walking Dead. Did her boobs rot off? They're, they were like, they're like, uh, what's, there's nothing there. Oh, <laughs> oh there was no, some, there was like, there was like a rib cage. Like one nipple. <laughs> oh, jeez. Did they, did they get away with showing a nipple Z, on AMC? You know, it's funny. Why it's Z, rotted. Z Nation, they, they came up with their new, their new uh, season, right? Yeah. Um, so, I didn't even finish the first season, uh, okay? I thought it was okay. So I, I figured I'd get into the second season. So I'm watching it, right? And the guy Murphy... Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but he, he ends up hiding at a strip club. And Murphy's the guy who got bit, survived, and he's got the cure, and everybody's hunting for him. Oh, that dude. So he he's, he looks like a... So annoying. Yeah, he's just weird. Is but that he, the skinny guy from Road Trip? No, that was, no, no. no, he's in the movie, though. I know, he's, I see. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched the show, but I caught glimpses. It, it's funny, though. He's like, like, now he can control zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He now, now he controls he zombies. Controls zombies. So you see in the strip club, like Wormwood, right? <laughs> now if you, if you think about it, he's in a strip club and he can control zombies. What do you think he's doing? <laughs> oh that's oh my terrible. God. Don't you don't don't spoil it for me. I'm gonna. T- <laughs> Ah, what, what did they get away with on Sci-Fi Channel? Was there blur? There's, was there blurring? Uh, well, they Sci-Fi were fully clothed. pretty G-rated, yeah. yeah. They were fully clothed. Fully clothed. The fully Walking clad. Dead, though. Some great oh. zombie comics, man. I brought a couple of the newer the issues. Dead. He's got Walking Dead. Yeah, these what? are the what two latest going? issues here. Oh. A lot of people die, so... A lot Don't of spoil people. it. Spoiler alert. But the cover of um, issue 145. No, no this is, I see a samurai sword I think we're supposed to blood. suppose this is Michonne's sword, but there she, she's alive. I don't Yay, want to spoil anything no. for anybody, but she's alive. Don't That's all the main concern is she's still not yeah. there. As long as Michonne she's still decapitating still zombies. That's fine. Awesome. <laughs> like, where did she learn her ninja skills? But you can just see Kirkman's... This is Charlie Adler drawing these covers, of course. Right. But Robert Kirkman's style is just awesome for zombies. It's very... Gritty and very dark, like yeah, his use of shadow. I don't know how he does it though, it's pretty dope. Now, The Walking Dead, this, is there a comic series for Fear the Walking Dead? No, no, nothing, nothing yet covers what that's completely original for TV, and I'm watching that show. It is awesome. It's the awesome. third episode. Have you uh, have you watched the third I've episode? Had, I've seen the third episode, and, and everybody it's... was hating on it for the first two, and I'm like, I'm telling you, once it goes down, it's going down. And it went down. <laughs> we finally got the military. So You're excited to. See what happens now. Yeah, like, the next like, episode is gonna be crazy, bro. Like, well, what's going on? So we, this is gonna be continuing on to October 11 when The Walking Dead finally returns to. But now we get to see six. why these people are the way they are and trying to survive in their little enclaves. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're gonna meet some crazier people. And so this is a really good setup to the psychology of how those, well, they're called the wolves. We're gonna meet in season six of The Walking Dead. We already kind of met them at the end of season five. Yeah. And, oh, they're called uh, wolves. Well, the they carve W's into their um, victims' yeah. foreheads. That's right. That's and right. and uh, you know they wear zombie skins to get around and stuff, and they're very dangerous. And what? 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 Yeah. I, what can I watch this? <laughs> you can't watch it. No, I don't have AMC. You don't have Hulu. Come come to the store. We've got them all recorded. Oh really? If you want to catch up on Walking Dead, anybody. Uh, I'm not trying to call anybody to action here, but please come watch some Walking <laughs> Dead with me. I'm, I get lonely. I, I'm bored. <laughs> That's I'm not a call to action because there's not much action going on. Here. <laughs> we just want to watch a movie. Movie. I just love watching Walking Dead. That's a great show. Awesome. Yeah, but I mean, I, I've caught the Walking Dead stuff. I'm almost up to date, but I fear of Walking Dead. You uh, gotta watch it. People are hating on it, but you know, it really ties into the show, and you'll see as the show progresses how it's gonna do so. But who? It, it is, the wolves the, are in what? Walking Dead or Fear the Walking, the the walking Dead? They, oh. We saw them at the end of season five. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And so they're a dangerous new sect of people, and I think Fear of the Walking Dead's kinda gonna set up how everybody's psychology kinda splinters. As, you know, some people choose to protect each other, some people turn into scavengers, you know, and you, I, we already started seeing bits and pieces of that, even as people are just rioting, not realizing it's the end of the world yet. Yeah. And Fear the Walking Dead. They just think, oh, they're killing innocent people. Yeah. You know, just because you walk slow and... <laughs> oh, yeah, they think it's police violence. The it's crowds are, violence. like, uh, protesting. It's like, eh, Nobody knows eh. what a zombie is yet. What is these <laughs> things? Why are they biting us? Yeah. And it's like, there's, like, one kid, he's, like, okay. He knows. He's is, just yeah. packing stuff and running. <laughs> he's packing stuff and running. They, they, they end up killing the, the, the principal. 
you know? What? They didn't yeah. know he was a zombie. And they then, didn't know he was a zombie. They just thought, you know, oh. There's a lot of those moments where people walk really close up to a zombie not knowing and they almost get bit and you're like, like what? no, 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 What's no, no. What's wrong? What's wrong with you? Oh yeah, God, always. You're sick. That's you're happened like five well. times so far. Oh, are you that, kidding me? Yeah, that's are like, you okay? Why are you growling and walking that's, towards me? That's like, why, your skin, why is there blood all over your body? I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm watching this and I'm going, like, I'm going you stupid Don't walk SOB. close. Like, even if you don't think they're a zombie, yeah. you think they're infected. Like with something, you don't want to go and hug them or help them. Like these people are walking towards these zombie people. <laughs> right. Uh, like, why, you know, this why is a scream through the screen moment. This is, this is a, this is a immediately when I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, these are the people that are gonna die first. <laughs> They're gonna but that's die. the point of the show is <laughs> yeah. to like be like, let's see who gets off first. Who gets off first. See who of the human race is no so, longer with us. So far, no, <laughs> none of the main characters. In it's the story all the people right who now. like to hug zombies, yeah. of course. They're the first to go. <laughs> hugging. No more tree hugging. I guess you hug zombies. Yeah, don't. <laughs> but yeah, The Walking Dead. That was this. And what a phenomenon! Yeah. That only came out as a comic book in 2003. Right. Yeah. So I remember reading it at Borders. I was like, it Whoa, exploded, man. It's an awesome zombie comic book, and I believe they were only on issue like 30 when the show came out. Yeah. So I only I in in the comic book series I only got up to the part where, um. They were at the prison for a while. Okay, yeah, sure. And then, you know... They're still it, in the middle of the governor saga. Yeah, it led up to the to the town where, you know, Rick goes to this town and he gets kidnapped. And, uh, you know, you meet the governor. And that's the best finally. part about the comic and the show is they don't follow the same storyline. No. You're only getting the essence of certain characters. Like, everybody knows by now, Daryl's not in the comic. Darryl's He's only in the TV comic. show, of course. But that's the great thing. The show is great, and the comic is great. The comic is just going different places that a TV show just simply can't. You know, the, like, right now, they're finding new towns of survivors, and they're bigger and larger. Yeah. Then you could... They probably couldn't even do it on the show. The budget wouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, and then the story just is going to be, like, you know, full-on civil war. Yeah. There's a lot of war going on in the issues leading up to... In the 130s and really? stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh. But we're getting like pieces of it in the storylines in the show. They're not fully detailing them in the show. They'll touch on pieces and parts to get the fans excited. No, yeah, I like when females touch that. pieces. <laughs> well, Look then you'll like this. One. Yeah, this. He's looking at my underground. So oh, I brought these an example. Stuff. So, like we were saying, you know, with Seduction of the Innocents, when people stopped doing horror in the '60s, right? Not everybody did. There's a lot of underground comics, great underground comics from the '60s. That's when, like, um, you know, Robert Crumb and um, Crumb. Wilson and Spain and all these underground artists were together. I think Crumb's work is like the first time I saw. Like nudie stuff in comics, and so this is kind of like a little in the vein of Crumb. Is um, Date is his name, D E I T C H. Thrilling murder comics. and thrilling murder. This is kind of like the style that Crumb would publish under his cross hatching. Is kind of reminiscent, dude. It's like Manson, but like a yeah. So they Manson. they oh, took nice. these they took these things underground and they wrote their own horror, not sanctioned by major publishers like uh, Kitchen Sink, Last Gasp. Um, Ripoff Press. They they were all from San Francisco in that area. Um, and he's under the Fantagore. Gap. This is Richard Corbin. He, you might know him from um, that movie Heavy Metal. There's a portion where this is character named Den. Oh, Den. Right, Richard right, right. Corbin created Den. Really? Yeah. So nice. This, and so he did a horror John magazine Candy in the 60s called Fantagore. Den in what? The movie That's John true. Candy. Yeah. I was wondering what that voice was, man. I was like, this John Candy. Some more Richard Corbin, some Grimwit. Oh, yeah. He always does the curvy women so great. Oh, like he just goodness. he can capture that essence. I captured it. And he's he's still working too. <laughs> he's he's done work on the Ninja Turtles. Oh, he's wow. done a couple covers for the Ninja Turtles if you recognize the style. Slow okay. Death is another one. Now, do you have any of those underground Japanese extremes oh, or comics? <laughs> I didn't. I, I thought it was gonna be televised. I didn't want to get censored. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't televise here, sir. This is some modern so Richard Mutant. Corbin, son oh, of nice. Mutant World. Oh, I, see how I crazy see, and I see he's very Netflix. realistic with his style, but right. also just very outlandish with his subject matter. You know. I see nipples. Yeah. What? He's, he doesn't shy away from I the just nipples. Saw nipples. We're, we're like, so, we're so we're Yeah, you guys, one track bastards. mind, come on. Oh, I know. Well, that's the point of horror, right? Mutant There's world. always going to be some girl with no bra on and a, and a white t shirt running in the woods or something. <laughs> that is crazy. Children of Fight. These are all modern Richard Corbin, but then I brought this as an example of some Aussie horror. It's a painted cover of a giant skull. Oh, the colors are amazing. Nice. Um, but there's a lot of. 
you know, from other countries, they took the cues from America and they were just enthralled with our horror culture in the movies and stuff like that. This and they just expanded so on it. So this is 50, I have 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think 50 cents would pass these days. Yeah. I don't think you can afford it's that. And, uh, hey, it, 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 let's put it on eBay. <laughs> You know, I I'd, I I'd rather much sell to local people. Local. Everybody tells me why I don't add, uh, sell everything on eBay is like I'd rather just have a store people can come to buy them locally because all the comics I find I find them on island. These are all from Hawaii. Really? I'm not like find, going to the mainland and finding collections. I have nice. Here. I have not seen any of these around. Even when uh, Perry. Sir Perry. Store, yeah. Well, collectors are real. You know, they, they hold their stuff tight. So if they can relate to you, if you can enjoy as much as they enjoy, oh, like, nice. you know, you really have a collection to show it off. But you got to find the right people to show it off to. The kind of people who are going to look at it and have the same reaction you are, who are going to be like, look at that art. Like, um, here's the latest issue of Horror Hound. We Horror got Hound, dude. Hellboy. Galermo That's Del like kind Toro. of, yeah, good. Oh, nice. And oh, so, nice. Hellboy 2 is one of the greatest movies, I thought. Oh, and it's not necessarily a horror Army. movie. That's yeah. like a. It's like a you know a sci-fi adventure sci-fi movie. Sci-fi adventure fantasy. But it's so good. It's just so. But Hellboy has his horror roots. Yeah. Mike Mignola is one of our greatest horror artists of you know the modern day. Oh my goodness. And he's he's redoing uh, Frankenstein right now in his series Frankenstein Underground. But. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. It's a five-part series. I think it just ended. So we got the one through five. Um, but Mike Mignola is definitely somebody to read for sure. That's awesome. Hellboy. His early Hellboy stuff in the 90s. And, you know, we had that chatter about Ron Perlman trying to get Hellboy 3 made. I hope he succeeds. I, I hope that, yeah, man. I mean, he... Here's, here's how cool Ron is. Uncle he Ron. Had, yeah, Uncle Ron. Because <laughs> he's old. He's right? cool, bro. He's in every yeah. good movie. He's in every good and movie. TV series. Got, I just watched Pacific Rim right? for the first time. I was like, Ron Perlman. Why he's haven't I there? been watching this? Yeah. Pacific Rim? A monster eats him, dude. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> and <laughs> not to spoil it, but he cuts his way out of the stomach at the end. Nice. Post credits. Oh, There's dude. a post credit scene. But uh, yeah, Ron, here's the cool thing about that guy. He, you know the Make a Wish Foundation thing? Yeah. Yeah? He oh, actually man, you're going to make me cry. He actually showed up in costume, in full makeup. In a Hellboy. Hellboy costume? Yeah. Oh, and that's not no small makeup for a Hellboy. Yeah, no. no that's, that's like, like three, five hours of makeup. And, you know, he just, because this kid likes Hellboy, he loves the movies, so, you know, he, he made his wish come true. He, he got to talk to Hellboy. I mean, he's full on, and he's got the arm and everything, You man. can't not believe Ron Perlman dressed as Hellboy. Like, he just looks like the son of the devil. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. And he's so makeup, massive. Yeah. The practical makeup and artistry for that, they they limited their CGI on that. We, we talked about that in movies about like the, the practical. Nothing and the beats stuff. practical yeah. effects ever. Mm-hmm. Even Nothing. if it looks bad, practical effects are better than CG. Because yeah. if you can even detect a scent, like a hint of pixelation, you're like, this is crap. I'm watching a cartoon. <laughs> this is junk. I don't <laughs> like this. This is CGI, man. This is like Java. Job- this is CGI. Java. And <laughs> Why can't we watch in CG? Go to CG. CG. It's, like, like, it's like the most horrible thing. It's like, you know, just reference like Jabba the Hut in the special edition of A New Hope. <laughs> well, yeah. you know what? They had to do that, right? Dude, we're going to get into this whole Star Wars thing. <laughs> no, don't. Well, no, real quick, because the original guy they had casted to play Jabba was a real guy, a real human. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. So they had that whole scene blocked out, and they, they, they filmed it. Yeah. And he's like, you know, we're going to actually go with this practical big fat blob. Couldn't get me to do the role, but they, they needed. So I wanted you were, I, I was How old were you back then? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was the size of Jabba back then. Anyways, um. <laughs> So they went with it, and when Lucas went back, he was like, you know, that scene that actually makes sense. So if you watch it, and you actually put the pieces together, it actually yeah, makes it sense. helps tie the story together. Yeah, yeah. So then, Han and <laughs> so you have to go through it. And they're like, wouldn't it be funny? It was a joke. Wouldn't it be funny if he's, because they couldn't get it, how is he walking through Jabba? You know, Jabba's big. Step on his, yeah. Step on, on, his, step tail. on his tail thing, yeah. Right. Why don't you make him step on his tail? And I was like, so he did it. No, the whole time when I went, I, it's like the only of the special editions I saw in theater. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, wow, Jabba lost weight. <laughs> he was very skinny back then, man. What happened? <laughs> but, yeah. 
the CGI thing is going on. Eh, a little out of hand, a little out of hand. Oh, man. I mean, well, it's like, just so good in horror movies, like the throat cut scene, where they grab the throat, and you know it's an easy effect to do. Yeah. Just put, yeah. like, the little blood hose by it. Just grab your throat and have the blood spurt it, through the hose. Right. I mean... Well, simple. Yeah. Which we're going to do in our movie, but... Yeah, but <laughs> we're making a movie with a lot of blood. You want to you die in our you movie? You want to die in a movie? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> we got shaggy. Because I was cut. always horrified by those throat cutting scenes. It, like, my first horror experience where I was truly horrified was I think it was Jason the first Jason Friday the 13th somebody's hanging upside maybe it's the second one he's hanging upside down by a snare by his leg and Jason just comes right with his machete and cuts his throat and he grabs his throat and he's like has this horrified look on his face while he bleeds out hanging up and I'm a kid watching this I'm like oh my god (laughs) (laughs) why you made me watch this I think that was part two. That must have been part two because Jason exists, right? He yeah. was free. Wasn't he, he in Friday was, the Thirteenth. He, he didn't have the hockey mask. Yet. He had the potato sack. Yeah. <laughs> the potato sack. The mask. potato sack. No, I, I I know that. Which part. which I, I had the, I had the action figure and uh, I sold it for ten bucks to um, Mr. Gascon. Uh, Mr. Gascon won. Who, Alan? Yes. He wins. He has. Mm. I I sold them. Yeah, he's gonna. We're gonna get it back from him. No. <laughs> yes. You have. You gave me. You gave me. You gave me the Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, Jason Voorhees. So. Right. I'm happy with that one. No, but I would like you to have the other one. It completes the. Now set. you guys are just planning on attacking. Oh, Alan. I know Alan, I know Alan man. He's. And <laughs> Alan's cool. He's cool, man. <laughs> I, I just let him have it. He has that. He's just he planning has... on rolling up on him. And... What's up? Was that Jason with the ho- with the with, with, the, with the, potato the potato sack? The potato sack on his feet. Hey, so yeah, most bro. people don't know the history of comic books on Maui. So like Alika got most of his stuff. You said I remember when we first walked in. I said like, this smells like Perry. <laughs> oh yeah, I we oh. bought one of his larger warehouses and um, my my partner Bruce worked out a deal with them. They were selling it and then I ended up uh, purchasing it from Bruce's. Uh, Widow when he pa- when when he passed away. Oh really? We we had worked out the deal before he passed, but oh. um, but I I got it after he passed away. You're gonna smell it. I you know. gotta smell comics. <laughs> right. Well, if anybody, everybody here on the island Maui knows Perry. Perry, you'd smoke Sniffing. his cigar back in the day when smoking was legal to smoke in, in offices yeah, or right, in yeah. buildings. He would always smoke a cigar or have one in his mouth. That whole comic book store. Wrenched of cigars. I but love it, that smell. Yeah, but it was like a unique. I grew up with smoking parents, so actually it wasn't like stuck in my memory. You know, I wasn't like, wow, that's really strong. Like I was kind of like used to it already, so it was like. No, yeah, no. You if you grew up with smoking people, yeah. or parents or grandparents. My dad worked at the Seki machine shop. You could smoke in Tasty Crust back then. Yeah, right. right? So it's like, <laughs> you're in Tasty Crust. You're used to that smell already. Right. So it's like, but it's that. that but it's that cigar. Cigar in a pink smell. Like it, it just yeah. it was like you walk and in, it you seeps like, into the comics, the comics and the pages, yeah. but it was weird because you get up to the door you don't smell anything it's like your air sealed yeah <laughs> you open <sighs> comic books <laughs> comic books I didn't know it smelled like Swisher Sweets Swisher Sweets <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh, oh what time is it. Yeah, I gotta get yeah, he get got, there and open he, the store. He gotta open up the store because this is not happening at night. This is. Uh, <laughs> it is happening. I at hate night. to ruin the illusion for everybody. No, it's, oh, okay, it's happening at night. <laughs> it's happening at night. You have to go open. That's why you blacked out the windows. Yeah, right. we blacked out the windows. <laughs> he has to head over to the store because they got oh, the magic. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, over. yeah. Oh, thank you for coming and thank you for having a store again because we as comic book fans. This store is for everybody. Like I just, if I hadn't started a store, I was just waiting for a store to open because I, you know, you need a comic store to hang out at and just. Talk about comics, yeah. right? Or you know, just sit and chill. You know what I mean? Sit and chill. You know, play some video games. Play some, play some watch magic something the nerdy or play inappropriate. Some magic whatever. the Gathering. Yeah. Magic. Uh, I'm yeah, for those magic. magic Gathering guys. <laughs> <laughs> would you guys? Would you guys go as far as to like have one full on D and D? No, we, like, we're working on it. Oh my D&D? god. Yeah, we've got oh, a couple, there. We know of a couple Dungeon Masters where. Oh, you know, we're dude. we're working Gary. to see, trying to figure out Gary's who's going. Yeah, there's Gary Kygax. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I never got. I never really got into D and D, but I've seen the whole. You know how it works. I've never uh, played. I don't know anything about it. But oh, it's, it's the, you know it's what? Good it on really ties into horror because yeah. there's there's dragons. There's, dragons, there's, there's the armies of dead people. I'm, ghouls, I, you know, yeah, ghouls, creatures, sorcery, wizardry, all that uh, kind of good. And you know, before I leave, I want to say this because even James Franco is crapping on this movie, and he was in it, but I really liked it. Your Highness, great movie. I love. Yeah, Actually, come on, James he, Franco, he, own it. It was he, good. He, 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 he's dissing on Your Highness. Everybody who was in that movie is like, this movie sucked. Really? I was what? like, 
I was like, what are you guys how talking you gonna, about? How are you going to be in a movie? McBride was awesome in McBride is awesome he wherever he goes. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. He can't not be awesome. Dang, like, I don't just like you, James Franco. Like you're awesome. <laughs> James Franco, I don't like you anymore. Loved you in the interview. I just don't like you now. Oh, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, like, I, like your, I like your brother. All right, guys, more. I'm out, guys. All right, all right man. Everybody, Thank give it so up much, for Brother Alika. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in and showing us all the great horror comics. When, when we have a chance, we'll swing by tonight. When I'm, I'm taking this. This is mine. Oh, darn. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Can you I was hoping faster? you forgot. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you very right, much. Everybody, don't forget to check out Alika at his shop. Yeah, at, it's uh, Maui Comics and Collectibles on 3333. Three, Derry Road. <laughs> tree, 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 <laughs> At the tree of Derry Road, on Unit Derry, 102. Uh, unit 102. Give them a call, 808 868 0219. Maybe they got comics that you want to check yeah, out. Yeah, just go down and check him out. You know, talk stories, talk yeah. comics, whatever. Um, so, back to the history of comics. Back to the history. What do you have for us, sir? What? Horror comics, I mean. Horror comics? You know what? I don't know if you've seen this. I bought, I got this from Alika back, like, two or four weeks ago, I think. And it's Marvel Comics Group presents Vault of Evil. Oh, no way. These are, like, I think it has the whole thing, like, they're, they're, they're paying homage to EC Comics. Uh-huh. And, you know, Tales of the Crypt was awesome. Haunting Fear. Vault of Horror. Uh huh. A little vault of evil. So they're paying tribute. The zombies to wearing yoga pants, by the way. You, you with your zombie and yoga pants and stuff, buddy. <laughs> My goodness. On she has no Kel- arms, so she can't hug you. <laughs> so they, there was after the whole dropout from the horror comics and everybody was like, oh, don't do that stuff. That's bad. You know, they're burning comics. I'm like, oh my god, I wish I was there. I would have been like. <clears throat> There's a whole propaganda in Hawaii about it too, right? I don't know if there was a whole... Pro- I don't think there was like too many comics back then. Really? I think the only comics you would have found back in the 40s and 50s over here was like at, at, at Total Drugs. Total Drugs! Oh my god, you and Totas, man. I can't believe... That Superman That's, and Batman yeah, and, and all Spider-Man. the superhero people. Back when it was like 25 cents, you know. It just it just turned 25 cents. It's like, oh, I'm going to come up with 25 cents now. Oh my god, it's so expensive. That's so, oh, why are you going to be 25 cents for? Like, every day. Mom, can I get... Tw- what you need 25 cents for? No. Uh, I like eat something, you know? I like buy one candy. I like buy one candy, a bar or something, and you go to the store and you're like, oh, let me get this 25 cents. Let me get this Let me get this comic book. I like I wish, it was, I wish it was around when comic books were 5 cents. Really? You know? Do you know how hated we would be? Why? Because we're horror people and sci-fi people. They would consider us crazy. You're satanic. Let them think what they think. Let them think. Back in the old days where, you know, teasing teasing fat people was more like, hey, how you doing, pudgy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, back then... We hey, were, chunkster? We were more accepted back then, I guess. <laughs> more acceptable back then. We would have been used car salesmen. I'm glad we're not there then. How's that? <laughs> well, I do not want to sell cars. I want to sell a car so he can get me the new uh, DC Comics Secrets of Haunted House. <laughs> or Tales of the Unexpected. Oh. The Witching Hour. I like this one though. This is like one of my favorites. I like the story in it. Dracula's What's Daughter. What's it called? Oh. Oh. Nice. Terrifying tales from the Witching Hour and House of Secrets. So basically, it's everything that the Witching Hour and House of Secrets released, but reprinted for Unexpected. Nice. And you, you just look at these and you, you immediately think, you know, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. I mean, look at look at those. Look at this. Look at that. I'm sorry, everybody on the radio is like, oh, uh, what? You can't are look at looking it. At it? <laughs> just look at it. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture right now, and it's gonna go on Instagram, and it's like, boom. Why is why is everything on Instagram now? I don't know. Instagram's blowing up. Instagram's blowing up. Oh, we didn't have time to talk to Alika about this one, though. I mean, this is one cool find. Right, the Clive Barker. These are trades. They they made. They, I had one with Pinhead on the cover. You're kidding me. And it got damaged by the rain. Ah. 
Screw like, you, Ray. Like, like everybody, like, like, oh, you got a sob story. Like, all oh, your comments got, yeah, all my comments got drenched in the rain and got thrown out. Did it? Yeah. You did. Don't you have a similar story? No, I don't. Don't remind me. I had a bunch of comics. I had a, a, a two boxes, full long boxes full of comics. One of them being two Superman deaths. Uh, Superman, Superman dies. That's on the, the the cover had the blood. Yeah, the, it was a black Superman black sign. plastic. You can't see the original cover. You just had the black plastic over the comic. Yeah. And then I had an open one because I wanted to read it. I knew that one was gonna be a money because it's money. I I should ask Ali how much it is, but it's money yeah, in mint condition. Story. All my stuff was pretty decent. I got it from Perry. So with that being said, I had I had to put it. I couldn't keep it in my way. <laughs> Thank you, Pizza. Thanks. <laughs> so that's going on Instagram. <laughs> that's going on Instagram. So uh, with with that, this looks like I'm doing the whole president thing. Um, it rained and I didn't have uh, a really good trunk at the time. <laughs> Ooh. So the whole thing got drenched. Every single comic book, every single comic book card I had. Remember back in the day, the Marvel comics. Yeah. The comic book cards. Um, the X-Men cards and all that with the holographic stuff. Everybody was getting the holograms. I have, I have, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I'm pretty sure I still have for Marvel Series 1, the Cosmic Spider-Man. Holo? Hologram. Yeah. Nice. I still, at least, I don't know though, when I look at it, I'm like, oh, I think it kind of lost its flair. What, the, the whole hologram? Because like, uh, like a couple times I left it out in the sun. <laughs> not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> nah, not not bad. Not bad, boo. Not bad. It's like stop my fault. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. So all my comics got destroyed. So bottom line, I was sad. Um, I was uh, well, I was more hurt than anything because I I let that happen. I shouldn't have been more mindful. So that means like your comics got destroyed, my comics got destroyed. Boom. All the ladies. All you need to do to get into my pants <laughs> is show some flesh. Just show me some <laughs> co- get, show me some classic comics. <laughs> right. Oh, that's what I thought you said classy boobs for a second. No. Boobage. No, man. The way the way to my heart is comic books. Nice. So all you ladies out there who you ladies if you all have, you ladies. You have to have some like, you know, first first issues or first series of Walking Dead and you know, if you, ha- if you happen to look like Elvira, too, you know, that's a plus. If you look like Elvira. If you look like Elvira. <laughs> <laughs> What's my deal? Stop it. <laughs> I have Elvira on my wallpaper for my phones. That's how much I love. I think, no, I got to put something up there for Halloween. Elvira is full on Halloween. Yeah, time. she's, she's, she, um, epi- uh, uh, the epitome. The epitome of Halloween. No, not, not not necessarily the epitome of horror. Well, I remember back in the day when girls would dress as Elvira when she was at her height of at, at her at her peak. That was the acceptable yeah. Halloween costume back then. Now everything is like uh, I'm gonna be Elvira. I'm the, the, like forget Elvira. I want to be a scoutmaster. I want to be a scoutmaster. <laughs> yeah, Girl Scout. I'm wearing my scout, my Girl I Scout. I want to be a Girl Scout. But you know that the Girl Scout, you know the special kind you buy at Maxi's costumes. Like it's like, eee, look at me! Oh, there it is. That's my panty. Okay, off of Halloween. Front Street, Front Street. Street. I'm at Front Street. You know, like, dude, like everybody, like some girls at Front Street is like, um, what am I gonna wear for Halloween? Um, let's just paint my boobies gold. <laughs> You're <laughs> duct tape. You are experienced, man, with the booby gold stuff. No, but I'm re- I'm retired from Front Street, so I'm just like, you know. <laughs> goodbye. Good, good, goodbye. I haven't gone back since like 2006 or something. 2007. That's still more recent than me, sir. What? I haven't gone since the 90s. Yeah, in the 90s. <laughs> okay, back to comics. Back to comics. I love horror comics. Topics. Topics. What? Where? No, no, no. Huh? I just <laughs> back on track, sir. Oh my god! Stop the Tourette's, Tourette's, brother, Tourette's. Tourette's, Tourette's, Tourette's. Okay, so 
<clears throat> well, you're over there drawing. You got? You're, you're drawing some zombies. I'm still trying to draw this zombie chick with half her body torn off. And I got to work on her lower half. And I still got to do the skull thing for Alika. You are a, you're a multitasker. I'm trying. I'm trying. You're on, the, you're on the air right now. And you're drawing zombie <laughs> women with protruding breasts. <laughs> well, you have to make her In a provocative hot. manner. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as hot you're, as possible. You're lucky. You're lucky. It's not 1954. Why? And, what happened in 1954? And Doctor and Doctor. Yeah. Kurt 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 Doctor Rhythm and Doctor Freddy Doodle. Freddy Doodle. Doctor Freddy Doodle would be like, "Hey, buddy, that's that. You're 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 you are poisoning the youth of this nation. You are you are the reason why you the are youth the of today." Why the youth of today is. We got a lot to say. Yeah. Are you giving her a camel toe? No. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Making her, t- I'm putting a skirt on her. Jeez. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that nobody's like, coming here yet and says, "Hey, dude, you guys gotta cool it on the sex stuff." You know what's funny? I got nothing but compliments about her sexual in the windows. Ow! <laughs> You're like, dude, that's funny. You guys gotta keep talking about that sex stuff. I'm like, really? Ah. We're talking about horror, and you get the sex out of this? Wow. But you keep talking boobs and you say something about female upper torso. Female upper torso. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. How did, did the people did the people say, um, oh, we like it when he sings? I'm sure. Hark the herald angels sing. Okay, back on topic, sir. Glory to the newborn king. Shaggy. I, I can sing it. It's public domain. I know, but we're supposed to be talking more on comics and you're over singing Christmas songs. Like, oh, they, they, they kind of like a little sneak peek of our Halloween, uh, not Halloween, our uh, Christmas episode. Christmas episode. <laughs> we'll, we're, we'll be talking about your yeah. of Scrooge. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, the ghost comics. of Jacob. Ghost of Jacob. Hey, that's kind of like a comic. That's a comic. That's a comic world kind of deal, you know. What is the comic world kind of deal? Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm pretty sure they made some Scrooge comics. Did they? Yeah. We should ask the leak of that. It's a thing, you know, like adaptation of the actual book. Did you know that they made an adaptation of Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Did they? Yes. That was like one of the first, like horror type comics. It was on a like a double. Thing, but the wait, wasn't even a guy's name, man. Washington Irving. He wrote Legend of Sleepy Hollow. He also wrote um, Rip, Rip Van, Rip Van Winkle. No, shit, the one where the dude is like, oh, I fell asleep, and then Rip Van, R- Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah. Rip. I that can't dude. speak today. I can't speak. Either. I'm in draw mode, I guess. <laughs> and I I'm, can't speak. And I'm heavily medicated. Not. Yes, I am. You're lying. I'm not lying. You didn't share. I'm not lying. Everybody's enjoying this now. Yeah, they're like, oh my god, they have lost their marbles. You're losing it, buddy. You're losing it. But yeah. And um, Classic Comics released that, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. They okay. also released Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and they say that that was like the f- first like full on because it's full adaptation of the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde uh-huh. in comic book form. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like one of the first ones, and then EC Comics came out, and you, you saw what? Right. I saw what they did. They did some EC awesomeness. Comics, some awesomeness. I mean, the Vault of Horror, Haunting Fear, Tales from the Crypt. What else? Tales from the Crypt. Does it? No, there gotta be more than that. Yeah, like weird fantasy, crime suspense stories, all that classic stuff. Sweet. You know, and then some dude came along, Doctor Doodoo. Doctor and just doodled all over it. Doctor Doodoo, oh my goodness! I, I just, it. If we're going to get into something political about comics, about comics, you got to talk about Doctor Doodoo. Okay, we've got approximately sixty more minutes to this show, sir. You have? Can you squeeze it down in sixty minutes? <laughs> I kind of like, <laughs> like I think we pretty much talked about everything. We should talk about like some new horror movies that we're watching. Like what? 
Um, I just this is not new. Okay. Okay. Now, if everybody has um, Netflix. Netflix. If you have Netflix, you know when you're Netflix and chill, you know you club your girlfriend. It's like, hey, come over. Let's let's uh, let's watch Netflix and chill. You know. No, not Netflix and chill. No, no, no. no. I have Why too not? many nieces that know that line. It's scary. Oh, that's scary. No, but you want to You want to Netflix and chill, baby. You want to Netflix and chill. Netflix well, and chill. Nineteen months but, later. Um, nine months later. There's nah. a great. There's a great um, Spanish horror film. What called? From Spain. I don't know if I can see this on the air. Well, it's it's called Witching and Bitching. Oh, the Witching and Bitching. Right. I love this movie. Okay. It's so me why. awesome. It's the story of these guys that uh-huh. uh, pull a heist on a pawn shop, I guess, or a jewelry store. Mm-hmm. And he took in, like, a box full of gold rings. box full of gold rings? Yeah. And they're on the run. They have a guy. They, 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 they kidnap this, this taxi driver. Uh-huh. He had a passenger in the backseat. They, they duct taped him, and they threw him in the, in the trunk. They did? After they stripped him. That's crazy. Yeah, he wasn't naked. He wasn't fully naked, but you know, he was. I think he got eaten. What? Yeah, because they end up in this town, and it's full of witches. Ah, oh. yes, witches. Witches. I love witches. Witches and bitches. Yeah, but hey, what? It's just the movie. Witching and bitching. Oh, witching and bitching. Sorry. Yes. Okay. I think we gotta stop saying that already. Why is Shaggy behind me? I don't know, man. It's gonna be. Oh, yeah. You're, you're saying the B word way too much. <laughs> but anyway, this is a really good movie. This is a good movie. If you can tolerate everybody speaking in Spanish for the whole throughout the whole film. So is it, it's all Spanish. It's not no it's English. All Spanish, no English. It's a full on Spain movie. I'm like, if you wanna watch record. That's full on Spanish. <clears throat> really? Nobody knows what record is. It's well, the cover it says R E C. It looks like the old record on the VCR. Yeah. Yeah. But it was remade in America as Quarantine. Oh no way. Mm-hmm. And they're still making um, record movies up to, to now. There's like one, two, there's th- record three, then there's like record four, and you know, it all has to do with their little version of the zombie apocalypse. Right. But this movie is the witching and B word. <laughs> um, witching! It's so good. It's so good. It's such a good There's film. subtitles. You gotta yeah, read. There's subtitles. So you gotta I already read, hate it. You understand. You just gotta read. That's why. Hey, man, you watch kung fu movies with subtitles. Yeah, but that's okay. more interesting because then there's action. Well, this one has action, too. And it, has, it has comedy. It's comedy. Yeah, and just one, like, like out of the old out of the old hag, which is just, like, one, like, a couple hot ones. Oh, really? Yeah. The hot hags? Uh, this one is, like, she's got, like, you know, that, that hairstyle where it's shaved head and the hair is, like, you know, back, like, you know that whole shaved head style that the girls have now. No, I I don't know that that's that style. Okay, they're shaved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is a shaved head? Uh, oh, the anyway. side, just one yeah. side is shaved. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got you. So I got you. these three, these these criminals plus his son. This guy takes his son on a heist. Oh. They're all in they're all in disguise And the son is over there With two handguns Going Hey dad I'm helping you Yay Yay, Yay We're robbing We're robbing a, I'm a gonna die story. Yay And then They they end up In a small town Inhabited by Witches Okay And Yeah It's just one Unbelievable Night of horror Nice And These guys are pretty horny too Because they're going after The hot witch well, they gotta do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. But once once the witches start climbing the walls and start, you know, crawling all over the ceiling, and then you got one one of the old lady witches. She like, she puts a friggin' metal ch- chomper teeth, like false teeth, uh-huh. but it's full on metal. Okay. Yeah, and she just grabs onto the guy's hand. And it's like, do they show is it gruesome? There's, uh, there's some, a little some amount of gore in it. Gore? All yeah. right. But the ending is like, what? 
<laughs> What's that? Why? Do we want to spoil it for our fans out there? Uh, no, no, I don't want to. You guys gotta see it for yourself. Okay. It's just one amazing ending. So witching and uh, be itching. Be be itching. Be itching. Be itching. Be itching. Yeah, like you know when you get a sting, you be itching. Biznitching. Biznitching. <laughs> Trying to get a hip hop with it though, this sir. Witching and biznitching. Biznitching. Okay. So. Okay. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay, what else? What else? In horror films? Horror yeah. films, on, comic books. On Netflix? On Netflix. You want to talk about some more movies on Netflix? Sure, why and not? Have you watched High, High Lane yet? High what? Lane. High Lane. H-I-G-H-L-A-N-E. It's the French, it's the French horror movie. No. You're giving me all these foreign films, sir. I don't do foreign films. But it's so good. It's like an excellent slash. Oh. Ow. What? Dude. Dude. Have you seen the re not the remake, but kind of like a re envision Found the Dreaded Sundown? No, 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 no. Oh my god. Ow. Dude. Dude, stop hitting me. Seriously. This one is like, okay, you know how they made the remake Friday the 13th? Right. They remade um, My Bloody Valentine. Right, 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 right. And it kind of falls along the line of like that new stylized modern brutality, violent horror flicks. Right. It's kind of like they're trying to rip off what Rob Zombie was doing with his movies. Uh huh. So this this one is like just like one heavy duty, like almost soft core showtime skinamax kind of deal no yes that's why you should watch it because i know you like that stuff i like the real deal holyfield sir oh there's a real deal there's a there's a full 360 scene the girl the girl is like boom 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 and then all of a sudden oh wait reposition 360 boom oh no way yeah what is this movie called it's called the town the dreaded sundown oh but the storyline altogether is awesome Okay. And I don't know if you've seen the original Town of Dread Sundown. No. There's a scene in the original where the guy grabs uh, a girl's tuba, duct tapes his knife to it. A tuba? Yeah, a tuba. And he's like... (coughs) You you should not bear... You should not trombone. Trombone, tuba, whatever. Tuba's a big thingy, and trombone's the one with a slide. Hey, I was never in band, okay? I know you were in band, so... Shh. I'm not a band geek. You're... You're... you This one time, at band, band camp... camp? <laughs> <laughs> I stuck a tuba up my butt. Nah, anyways. Ew. Ew. All right, all right, all right, all right. Get off the tuba. Flutes. Trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all went up there. Okay, so what What? Ha- what else happened? What about... About the, the movie. The Town of Dread is now? Right. Watch it. A must watch. It's a must watch. And that's not a foreign film, right? No, it's American. Okay, I will have our correspondent Ululani watch it. Oh um, no, no, don't do it. Don't make her watch that. Yep, movie. I'm gonna make her watch it, and she's gonna have to. There's watch some it. brutal kills, man. Is there some brutal kills? Yes. Oh, she'll love that even better. So, and then the, I don't know if 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 um. The LGBT community jumped on it because there's a scene with where like you know it's like ah, ah, you know <laughs> two guys they're out alone and then you know all of a sudden uh, a killer pops up and it's like you guys shouldn't do that that's naughty no don't do that no bad 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 die 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 are you kidding me yeah two broke back mountain scene it it, it it doesn't go anywhere except for like talking stories in the car. By the way, Ululani is on our video chat right now. Oh, hi. Hi. How you doing? So she gave the thumbs up for the whole movie. She gave, It's on Netflix. Oh, I mean, <laughs> she's going to watch it. So we, she's on She's on video chat right now. You got to watch and, it. Well, I, guess, I guess I got to watch you it. You have to watch it. And we'll do a review on it on our, oh, yeah. on our YouTube channel. And they will talk about like like in, the fir- in, an, in another, in another um, episode. Well, we can do it show. on our YouTube channel. Don't forget, we are. We, we talked about slashers a lot. We should talk about slashers on this. A radio, slasher flicks on this radio show we do right here. Okay, we'll do we'll do slasher flicks 
I'm not. I'm not talking person. about. The, I'm not talking about the original guys. I'm not talking about Michael Myers. I'm not talking about Freddy Krueger. You know, they're all popular slashers. Right. I want to talk about the slashers that was like. Uh, uh, these guys. <laughs> these guys took. Jesus takes the wheel. Jesus takes the wheel. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, there's there's a string of slasher movies that came out that didn't get recognized, uh-huh. but kind of popular. Okay, you know, like you know, by Bloody Valentine and Happy Birthday to Me. Mm, all right, 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 right. Sixteen, right, right, right. Graduation Day, Spider University, Sorority House Massacre. Right, Sorority House Slumber Massacre. Slumber Party Massacre. Nice. Um, pieces. Oh, pieces, yes. Curtains. Okay, we'll talk about that on another episode. Um, You're going um, down the list, aren't you? Um, Frightmare. We got like five minutes, and you got Frightmare. Twenty million movies. Oh, um, see what else? What else is a good slasher? Good slasher flicks. Um, Frankenstein. No, no, that's not, that's not, a, <laughs> not a slasher flick. Final exam. Oh, final exam. Um, sh- the, the dorm that dripped blood. <gasps> I heard about that one. No, you have not. Yes, I did. It was at, it was in the horror section of Paradise Video. Yeah, it was. And thank God for Paradise Video. I, I it was like boom horror section. You know we should watch do, them all. We should also we should go see if there's anybody that has any of those Paradise Video stuff still left. No, I know you do, but it's some people, other people. Other people. Other people. Speaking of people, do you have any shout outs there? I do. All right. Well, first we got a shout out. Um, uh, Alika. Of course. Oh, Alika. we did that already. Well, well let's well, do it again. Uh, give, give Maui Comics and Collectibles. Right. Maui um, Comics and Collectibles. Tree, tree, tree. <laughs> Dairy Road. Unit sweet, 102. The sweet Unit 102. Call them at 808-868-0219. If you want to just chat about comics. Chat books. about comics, right. you know, on the phone all day. <laughs> or go down and watch Walking Dead, apparently. <laughs> um, I have a, I have an important shout-out to make right now. Okay. Uh, this is going out to the Holly Cow Cow program. Oh, Holly Cow Cow. At St. Teresa's Church, 25 West Lapova Street. Uh-huh. Um, if you feel like donating to the program, they, they, they do to take in donations. Uh, like canned goods like that. Canned goods, that if you want to donate, you know, some money to the to the hey, cause, call you know. Order. Key, uh, I'm trying to look at my notes, please. Okay, okay. Sorry. So that's Holly Cow Cow St. Teresa's Church, 25 West Lapola Street. Uh, the number is 808-875-8754. Uh huh. Now, if you're down there on Saturday, the 26th. What's at 5 happening? p.m. What's happening? I will be giving away free comics. You are giving away free comics? Yes, courtesy of Maui Comics and Collectibles. That's right. So um, I'll have double whammy. Also, double whammy. You will get. F- now, keep in mind though, this is for I'm I'm, I'm this is the free comics is going out to families with children. Right. That you know the, the kids don't really have too much. Come on down if you if your family that has kids and you know you guys are looking for something to eat and you know you, things ain't going your way right now and you know you need you know you, you need you need some extra help. Come on down, we'll feed you, we'll and I'll give you some free, free comics, comics for the kids. <laughs> yes, we got them all. We got teenage mutant teenage mutant ninja turtles. Oh, I got some uh, Simpsons comics in there. Nice. Yes, all good stuff. All good stuff. All good stuff. Hey, yeah. How, do you have any shout outs, sir? Um, a shout out. I made a promise to my my kid, uh, Maka Eva Carter. I know you're list tonight. You're listening tonight. Um, I promise I'll give you a shout out. Also to Kamai, his brother, older <laughs> punk. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love you, boys. And a special shout-out. I'm dedicating this show to my boy, Thomas Howard, all Thomas. the way in Kentucky. He's uh, he's healing up and resting up after having massive surgery. So, shout-out to you, my brother, Thomas. God bless you, brother. Captain V. He was also one of my partners in the old radio show that I used to do called The Morning Woody. Morning Woody. Yeah, Morning Woody. Yeah, that... W- <laughs> I'll suck you in your windows over there. <laughs> <laughs> you got the morning wood. Yes, I do. Got the morning wood. But yeah, um, shout out to my boy Thomas. You know, heal up, 
you know, rest up, get better, talk to you later. Yes, yeah, sir. So as we do normally every damn night. Damn, damn, damn. We'd like to thank everybody for listening to this here on KAKU 88.5 FM. The voice of Maui. We are Killer Cow. We're Tony Mendez. You listen to Friday Night Frights. Friday Night Frights, everybody. So we're going to do it. Ready? Yes, we are. Peace. Peace. Shaka. Shaka. Dig your Hanabadas. Dig them. We are out. out.